Hey, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Miles Minnick, and check me out on the Bootleg Kev podcast. Let's get it. Hey, before we get into the interview, man, shout out to Imperial Extraction. Let's crack open some of this world class dank right here. Uh, the Gush Mints. Oof. Listen, cultivated weekly, grown by the best cultivators on the West Coast. THCA flower. That's super good gas. They also got the pre rolls. They also got the vapes. All of it, 15% off right now, delivered right to your door. That's right. It's getting delivered to your door. It's THCA. It is legal. It's going to your door. All you got to do is be 21 and up. Go to imperialextraction.com right now and use the promo code BOOTLEG15, and you'll save 15% off site-wide. All right, let's get into the interview. All right, man. Bootleg Kev Podcast. Special guest in here, Miles Minnick. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, it's good to be here, man. Let's get to it. Yes. So for people who are not familiar with who you are, you're from the Bay Area. Yes, sir. Um, and would you consider yourself a quote unquote Christian rapper? A lot of people would. Yeah. I do music about my life and I live my life for the Lord. So, you know what I'm saying? How long have you been making music? Whoo, making music all together, maybe like 10 years, doing it professionally, like five. And the whole time has your like message been the same? No, nah, no, nah, for surely not. No, no, no. So, I grew up in the Bay, like doing like, you know, the mob music, the gangster rap, like rolling with, um, like DB the General, DSB Click. Like all of them with that like get active movement like 2010 and stuff. So you were like uh, rap, your 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 content was much more aggressive. Oh, for surely, yeah, 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 100. Uh, but like around 2011, you know what I'm saying? Like I found I found the Lord and eventually like I surrendered my music over to Him. You know what I'm saying? And did you notice like well that was a long time ago? Fuck, that's I'm sorry, I'm gonna cuss a lot. No, you good? Please, you straight, please, you straight. please excuse me because I, I can't control it uh, <laughs> around yeah. anyone's children either. Sometimes I, I, my friends bring their kids around, and I'll just be talking, and they be like, "Yo," and I'm like, "Hey, man, don't bring your fucking kid around me then." Right, right, right. Respectfully. Right. Anyway, um, with that being said, uh, I mean you're like a that's a long 2010 to now. It's 14 years. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it didn't happen overnight for you. Well, definitely not. And it's like, when I became a Christian, I didn't know if doing music was, like, acceptable the way I was doing it. Like, I was in the streets doing aggressive music, and when I thought about doing that for God, I didn't think that that was acceptable. And so it took me a minute to get back into it. So you, like, took a break from... For sure. Yeah. For sure. And then you, like, kind of were like, all right, now I'm going to kind of make my music about positivity and... Yeah. Yeah. 100. 100. And that was, like... When I started really tapping into it, take it serious, was the beginning of 2018. So between 2011, 2018, I'm just like, just trying to figuring it out, trying to grow in my character, yeah. integrity, you know what I'm saying, trying to really just become a man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting because I feel like if someone says they're a Christian rapper, they automatically are looked at with a certain, I would say, negative stigma in hip hop. Mm. Would you say that's the case? Uh, I would say maybe in the grand scheme of things, but for me, it, that really hasn't been the case. Right. Yeah. It might be, it may be because of the sound that I have and how I look, how I, whatever the case may be. Like, it may be because I'm authentically, like, from here. Right. Like, well, I mean, listen, culture. you have, I told, I told you this also. I was like, bro, your shit is like hyphy ass Christian music. Like, <laughs> it's like music you could bip a car to. But, and then repent after. Bip a car to and <laughs> repent after. Yo, hey, I'll take that. Yeah, as long as they repent. But, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, because cause for me, it's like there's guys like Shots of Lecrae, who's obviously had a major deal with Atlantic for, I think it was Atlantic. Uh, Columbia, I think Columbia, it was. Yeah. yeah but he, had a, he was on a major label. I, I don't know if he still is or not. I don't want to speak about his situation. But obviously very successful artist. Um, I feel like Lecrae was like... He was dope, but he happened to be a Christian rapper, mm -hmm. and I kind of feel like that's the key, because there's guys who, like, are quote-unquote Christian rappers, but their music is very, it's not very palatable. Mm, like, for, the, for like, a general audience? Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. feel like I, I pressed play on your shit, and I was like, oh, this is just, like, if I didn't know that, like, this is just some shit to Yeah, it's to, like, you know? once like, you realize it's Christian, it's too late. Right. Like, you already like it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so that's kind of, like, the method, like, put in the... The medicine and the food. Is there any, because uh, obviously, is there like a Christian rap world that you have to kind of penetrate and get into? Like, are there like, I just, you know what I'm saying? Like, There's, do, there's do definitely I, a world. Are there Christian rap blogs and shit? Yes. Like, what's the Christian rap academics? Yeah. Oh, the Christian rap academics. 
Oh, okay. Proper XL. Okay. That's a that's a popular Instagram for Christian rap. Rapzilla. Um, you got CHH Promotions and CHA stands for Christian Hip Hop. And there's like a plethora of those. So there's like tons of Christian hip hop artists that there we is. don't even know. There is. It's just a world I'm not hip to whatsoever. It's it's a subgenre of hip hop, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But people are selling out shows. No, I saw you do it. Listen, I, it is not easy to sell. There's so many artists that could not sell out a quarter of the Novo, let alone the full thing. So that's, that's very, very impressive. And you got a show coming up at the Observatory, too, in August, right? August 31st, yep. Yeah. So, like, you're doing, like, big venues. Like, this is, like, a, a movement that you're doing. So I think it's dope. Like, kudos to you, man, because you're doing it your way. Oh, much love, bro. It's a blessing. You know, I used to think that I had to rap about a certain thing a certain way to make any kind of progress or be successful. But it's like, I'm just leaning to what I feel like is right. I mean, at the end of the day, I always tell people, if you got a niche, and I'm not saying that, like, you being a Christian is a niche because this is your life. Mm. Like, it's who you are, right? But in hip-hop, it's a niche. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you know, with any sort of art form, I feel like lean into your niche because it's what makes you Find your tribe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And we... I feel like our tribe found us, though. Like, we just started putting out music. <clears throat> and I put out a song called Glow. Mm. And then our followers would just, like, organically call my team, like, oh, look at the Glow team. Look at the Glowers. I'm like, oh, snap. Okay, Glow Nation. Like, I would call them Glow Nation. And then I grew into something bigger than we can imagine. You feel me? Now we got Glow Festival. So is that your, like, your fan base? Like, your beehive? Glow my Nation? My beehive. Glow Nation is your beehive? Yeah. My, um... My Bobby socks is my rap pack. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep That's fine. Yeah. Yes, sir. So who was your who were your favorite rappers just like coming up? Like that you obviously being from the Bay, like who who are some guys who like influenced you who you who you would say the main one for surely E forty. E forty, yeah. E forty for sure. My ghetto report car, that album definitely uh shaped my childhood. You know, of course Mac Dre as well. The Wolf Pack got my bands on with yeah, the Pack. Like one of the most influential rap groups ever that gets no credit. Absolutely, yeah. and then I feel like what came out of the Wolfpack is like HBK gang, and so and I would like to point out that a lot of those ooh, beats that the packs were rapping on uh, sounded a lot like the uh, Mustard and League of Stars that came a little. Out. I wasn't gonna say it. Nah, I'm just saying. Much love, much love to to Mustard and everybody. No, but no, yeah. but I'm just letting you like, like but, the Bay had a little. They had some influence on everybody. One thousand percent. I just had percent. this conversation yesterday. I'm like, yo, the Bay and Texas get no love when it comes to who they influence. Like, mm, the Bay's mm. influence everybody, and they, it's just, the Bay just and, and always we know gets it forgotten. Too. Yeah. We know it. That's why. We oh got, no, like, y'all definitely know because y'all let everybody chip. know. Trust me, you meet somebody from the Bay, they'll tell you. We got this big chip on our shoulder. You feel me? But people from the Bay are like people who do CrossFit. They won't stop telling you about it. <laughs> yeah, we get it. We get it. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's the culture. We're proud of it, and if nobody gonna talk about it, we gonna talk about you it. Got you got you, man. Know what I'm saying? Have you worked with, the, uh, like, obviously you're making noise. Have you worked with any of the other up-and-coming art, like a guy like Pilo or, like, you know, some of the guys who are making John Max? Kill- oh, I don't know if you, would you work with somebody if they're not, let's ask that. If they're not aligned with you spiritually or values-wise, would you work with someone? Man, we was talking about this yesterday on, on Ruse Line. Uh, so I'm actually about to get in the studio with Pilo coming up soon. Fine. We're going to make some slaps. Uh, I'm in the studio with LaRussell in two days. Shout you know what I'm him. saying? And these aren't necessarily... Christian artist. Oh no, right? Pilo's not a Christian artist. <laughs> you know, you know? Me and Pilo have had some nights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that don't mean we can't make a song that is um palatable for both of our audiences that doesn't compromise. So you who you'll we are. work with Yeah, as long as it's not some crazy. Yeah, as long as it's like You're not gonna work with Playboy Cardi though. though. <laughs> I mean I mean not you feel me like the symbolism and stuff, the people Getting possessed during his concerts, we're gonna have to work on that. Oh, I've been to a, I've been to a Cardi show and uh, it was very very. I don't know, some vampire. Remember me and this fool there, and I was like, "What the fuck's happening?" Like some vampires. No, I just didn't. Dude, it was like a seance on stage, and I'm like, you know, the, that was the only time in hip hop, and like, you know, I'll be around some young young ass shit, but the Cardi shit, it rolling loud. Yeah, seeing last all year. These, seeing all these, no, it was no, this was in Miami. Seeing all these dusty ass, muddy white kids with. Beat up forces, just fucking, just ah, like it was just like I'm like this. Sh- I don't get it. Yeah, I don't. It's the only hip hop moment of my life where I looked up and I was like, I don't know what's happening. Let's go back to the trailer. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't really understand it either. You know what I'm saying? But shout so, out to him. Yeah, big big shout out to him. He got a movement behind him. You know what I'm saying? So maybe one day we could we could chop it up or something. Do you feel like, as somebody who uh, is a Christian? Mm. Do you feel, because I feel like nowadays a lot of artists, 
they have like cult like followings mm. and i feel like there's a lot of kids who kind of replace like you know when i was growing up when my parents were growing up i feel like religion was a lot more like pushed upon kids and you know stuff like that but nowadays it feels like like artists and celebrities and are kind of like the new religion for a lot of these kids do you yeah yeah 100 and so like your question is like like, how do I how I feel about yeah. that? Like, will Christianity not being the the norm as it was before? Um, I mean, this generation they're they're heavily influenced by what they see on their phones or like uh, the artists of today. Uh, I'm just I'm just grateful that I found something that's more more meaningful to me. You know what I'm saying? That could that's that lasts longer than the hype of an artist. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm just trying to encourage people like find 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 your your peace you know what i'm saying and my peace is found in jesus so do you care like to have non-religious people like come to your party like do you want do you want those people to like be fans like or is it like hey i got for sure because what's the name of your album it's like <laughs> cali christ what is it christ like california christ like california yeah yeah so it's like me like if i didn't know like if i if a dj head didn't put me up on you mm. or ace didn't call me if someone sent me an album that said christ like california as somebody just gotta tell you, I'm, yeah, atheist. No, I'm, straight, atheist. I'm straight, atheist. Yeah, yeah. I'd have been like, "Well, this shit ain't for me." Yeah. I wouldn't even have pressed play. Now I press play, and I was like, "Oh, this shit is fire! Mm-hmm. Like, this shit is dope." But it's like I almost feel it's almost like when Kanye put out uh, "Jesus is King." It was my least favorite Kanye album because I felt like he was pushing something on me, and I was like, "Well, this ain't for me." You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel like listening to your music, it doesn't feel like you're overly like slapping people upside the head with yeah but with a, a but the title you're the saying title the title is like yeah yeah it's going to like scare some people off before they even are able to give you a chance i can feel that i can feel that i'm mean, not to say that like you care or you should care because yeah, you're, yeah. this is your mission yeah but i'm just from my perspective i'm like well me and this fool like he's he's uh he's jewish um <laughs> he is. Yeah, yeah he's he just he just did a he just did a 23 and me and found out he's 30 percent jewish yes he, found it, out. he just did the test he's jewish and mexican straight up his 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 that grandma tight. cheated That's on tight. his grandpa with a jewish neighbor we we found all that we literally found this all out in the last 12 months you are crazy my producer did a one of the dna tests for people who can't see him on camera now he does I told him he needs to lean in. I told him he needs to lean into it. I said, "They got you own it now." Yeah, it's who you are. You got to go to the bagel shop. Anyway, um, but I was just saying, like, in terms of like, we're hip hop fans. So mm. when I hear when I heard your music, I was like, "Oh, this shit is dope." Mm. But I think that like the like you like we said the title. Mm. If I was just some normal rap fan, I might be like, "Man, that's some preachy ass Christian shit." Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, how do you find the? Because you're obviously what you're doing is working for mm. you. That's why I'm like, do you care that like that might push normal hip hop um, fans away, or maybe just turn them off from like trying to discover what you got? I mean, on? maybe I could I could consider the titles more, but I'm more so think about them when I'm making the music more so than when I'm titling the song. Right. Like with a song like Boost It Up, like that's a song about God and going harder in your faith. But when you put that thing on, you can sneeze to it, squabble to it, you can right. go crazy to it, and it's not gonna scare them away. And for Christ Like California, the album really uh, that was me like blending my faith with the culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because like you gonna get this Christ like message, but with the California sound and style. No, it sounds so, great. Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. But yeah, man, we just trying to trying to figure it out as we go. You nah, I mean, hey, it's working. Man, grateful. Do they have any Christian rap beefs happening? You know, yes, there is. Yes. Wow. Yes, but a lot of it is like like on the low, like wow. on on the like under. People hating on the low. On the under, you'll be surprised like how many unreleased Christian diss songs you will find. That's very unchristian, like. No, for real. That's why they don't put it out. Wow. That's why they don't release it. You and Lecrae got beef? Nah, nah. <laughs> Let's start it. Let's South do the Kendrick versus Drake thing. South South I know you did the Not Like Us freestyle, right? So did. So did. Uh, so I, I, I'm just curious. Yeah, because the Christian rappers beefing with each other just feels, it just feel, it feels like an oxymoron. But you know what? People have, you know what? People tend to use my songs to subliminally diss other people on them. Oh, so you have songs with features where other guys... <laughs> yeah, I'm will... like, why you got to do that on my song? Like, they don't drop names, but it's like, you're clearly talking about so-and-so on my song. It's like... When you hear that, do you send them a text and say, WWJD? Nah. 
Jesus wouldn't diss somebody on my song. Don't sub somebody on my shit. Hey, hey, but but truth be told, Jesus was low key dissing a lot of people in the Bible. Satan for sure. If you if you look at it, you know what I'm saying? Sure. The the over religious folks. He, he had was, some smoke for Satan. And the over religious folks. And the over religious So you think over religious people are a problem? Absolutely. Yeah. And, what would and, you define as over religious? Over, just so we're clear. Okay, okay. I think I think I think it's a good thing to to really break down. So an example of somebody being over religious is uh, let's say the protesters that come to my events. We get protested a lot by certain religious groups that say, what you're doing is satanic, it's demonic, God doesn't approve. Oh, trust me, I walk by them all the time. I go to wrestling shows, and these guys, are they got fucking signs and megaphones screaming at me. And I'm just like, dude, and it's do like, you think this is how, like, you're going to, like, this is not how it's done, buddy. You know what I mean? And it's like, I respect, like, the heart behind it. They may think they're doing the right thing, but, like, bro, that's that's not how you... You're not going to reach me that way. Right. You're not going to get me to change that way. Even if I felt like I, I wanted to change off of what you're saying, it's not going to happen through that. Right. Sit down with me. Yeah. Send me a DM. Right. Talk to somebody that but knows why me. Would, to, I mean, but you're putting out great music that's about... I think, I think what they want from me is the overtness that... Maybe other artists offer. Tell them to go protest like, Sexy Red, not you. Shit. Bro, bro. <laughs> we did an event in downtown LA uh, called Glovember. There was a rave next door to our event. But they were protesting you. I'm like, yo, if you want to come against darkness, right? Go next door. Everyone's on ecstasy next door. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. That to me that's that's over religious, but we just try to we try to really live for the Lord and, and just be ourselves. What was uh what 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 kind of was the catalyst to you finding Christ and, you know, giving your life up hey, to, brother. to a good Jesus out there? Yeah, yeah. Two, two, two things, two things. Uh, one day when I was 16 years old, it was a Wednesday night. I was smoking weed heavy, like in the middle of a smoking session. Good Wednesday. Yeah, good, good, good weed Wednesday. Uh, my friend was like, hey, Miles, bro, we should go to church. I'm like, go to church. Hi. Like, yeah, hi. I'm Sounds like, what are you like talking about? great time. What are you talking about? Go to church. He's like, bro, they got the girls at the youth group, bro. We go crazy. <laughs> like, let's tap in. Let's really go. Uh, holla at some girls. And so we went. But the youth group was closed that night. Right. And so we went into the main, the main sanctuary with all the older people. So we went in there. And then me, never been in, in a church before. Like, I've never been a church person. I don't know the music. I didn't right. know anything about it. But in the service, I was, like, captivated. What kind of church was this? Was this a black church? It was a black church. Okay. Black church. I was captivated. Uh, then at the end of the message, the pastor did what's called an altar call where you call somebody to the front if they want to accept the Lord. And when I went to the front, me being the only one that went to the front, it's like I was uncontrollably like crying my eyes out. And I, I, I literally felt something I never felt before. It right. was like a warmth and embrace. You know what I'm saying? And, and so it wasn't that, the weed. It, a brother? Nah. Wasn't the weed. It felt, it felt like God took away one high and gave me a new one that night. Just you know, so we're clear. The night you accepted God, you were high. One hundred percent. Nice. One hundred percent. That's great. Yeah, yeah. But but I was still like like on the fence about it, right. even even with that moment. But two years after that, I was like in a tug of war for my soul, for real. Like my friends in the streets was like, Miles, bro, like why are you why are you switching up? Then my yeah. girlfriend at the time, who's, who's now my wife, she was like, Let's go to church more. Let's really like try to get better with this. And so on a Saturday night, I'm like, God, if you're real, I need you to speak to me in church tomorrow. If you're real. If not, then I'll just live my own life. I went to church the next day. Out of nowhere, the guest speaker from Atlanta sees me in the back. He said, you, young man, come here. Calls me out of the whole church, a whole crowd of church. I came to the front. He was like, young man, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I feel like uh, you're called to do music for God. Uh, God's going to use you on social media. God's going to change your life. And all of these things, right? Tell me things about myself. I didn't never told nobody. He didn't know I was struggling. He didn't know who, he didn't know who I was. Who was this guy? His name is Apostle Harden. I never met him. It wasn't James Harden. No, nah, not no. James Harden. Okay. But told me that, and then that that was like, okay, like, I feel like this is a Shout out to thing. Apostle Harden. That guy, he's on his shit. Hey, brother, no cap. Damn. He was tapped in. So he he was just like, he kind of just like showed you the way. Like, oh, this is this is the right path I need to go on. I feel like God answered my prayer through him calling me out to the front. That's for surely. Yeah. Nah, I mean, I get it. That shit's crazy. They asked him the night before and then he called out the music and the social media and... Wild. And at that... So what year was... How long ago was this? Was Brother, this, that... Was this 2018? That was October 14th, 2012. Oh, shit. 
That that was 2012. Like I didn't fully dive into the music at that time, but that's when I knew eventually. So from 2012 to like 2018, what are you doing to make money? Are you just got a regular job? What do you? <laughs> so I was working at a movie theater at that time, uh, my Cinemas in Pittsburgh. Then I was working at Wells Fargo for like four years. Uh, then Travis Credit Union. So you was a, you were at the bank. So yeah, I, I was a little banker. So you're, yeah. good, you're good with math. Yeah, but I hated it. I I did not like. Yo, working. when you guys would like, my friend manages a bank, and every time there's like sixty dollars missing, she has she's the manager, so oh, she has bro. to go through the entire oh day. Sometimes she'll be at the bank until like eleven o'clock at night trying to track down where sixty dollars went. Trauma, bro. Don't even tell. And that's how I got fired. That's how I got fired from the bank, 2019. Well, it, it, it wasn't could be, it that. could be like the, but but it's like if if you can't find where the money's missing, it's on you, right? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes if it's like somebody goes to the bank and they and you give them too much money, <laughs> that's they they're not gonna give it back to you. Sometimes, sometimes, but most of the time, of course not. You would give it back, especially if you work in the hood. We worked in Antioch. Yeah. All kind of people. Shout out to Woody. Rest in peace. Big tones from Antioch. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, we're about to kick off another interview brought to you by Hardeen. That's right. If you're in Vegas, it's the number one dispensary in the country. The craziest selection of premium cannabis. And uh, all you got to do is shoot them a follow. Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. HardeenLasVegas.com. When you're in Vegas, tell them I sent you. Let's get into the interview. Hey, man. Shout out to our family at Odd Sox, baby. First of all, I'd like to say our family at Odd Sox our brother Obese is back, and we just want to say welcome back, Obese. We love you, brother. And look, right now, man, you can go to oddsocksofficial.com, use the promo code BOOTLEG right now, and you will save 20% off whatever you order. They got the draws. They got the socks. My favorite, the Odd Socks Basics. I have them on right now. Uh, also, they just dropped the slides, man. You get hot Cheeto slides. What are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? They got whatever you need, man. Cheetos, fucking Coca-Cola, Doritos, Ghostbusters. Uh, one of the greatest 90s shows of all time. One of the greatest cartoons ever. Put Mike Judge on the map. How about some Beavis and Butthead underwear? You know what I'm saying? Look, whatever you're into, they got it all. All the crazy licenses, the most comfortable socks, the most comfortable underwear. It's all that I wear. Oddsocksofficial.com, promo code bootleg, save 20% off. Let's get back to the interview. Hey, Simba's from Antioch. Yes, he is. Yeah. That Lone Tree, Deer Valley legend. Him and Young Kurt was really putting on. But yeah, no, nah, I, I I just, I, so you were you were just doing the normal shit. So you start taking music serious again in 2018. Yep, yep, for Sully. So how many... And I, I was a youth pastor, too, during the time I was working at the bank. So I'm at, I'm at the church, like, teaching young people and stuff, too. How many, uh, like, how long before you actually started to, like, catch real traction doing this new style of music and you were like, oh, this is going to work, like, this might work out? Like Immediately. Was, immediately. Yeah, immediately. It's been, it's been a slow burn, but I had an immediate spark. Well, you're also pretty talented. So, like, a lot of Christian rappers aren't that talented. <laughs> You know, from what I've heard, at least. Brother. The I'm only I'm one I can on. point at is Lecrae. I'm going to put you on some dope ones. Do you remember a guy named Carmen back in the day who used to sing on, like, channel, well, on, like, the Christian TV? His name was Carmen. Carmen. I don't, I don't know. Oh, my God. So i would been to black churches many times. My best friends, like, very religious, grew up with him, would go to church with him. And every time I'd be, like, the only white kid in that motherfucker. And I feel like the preacher would be looking right at me and i'd just be like <laughs> and i'd have all these older black ladies dancing and losing their shit next yeah to me yeah with wigs falling off hats on yeah and i'd just be sitting there just shook like damn why'd i spend the night at this fool's house this weekend Dang. <laughs> but but there was this but it, we he used to listen to christian music at the at his house there's a guy named carmen and then obviously kirk franklin you know yeah so. kirk still going crazy to this day apply stunt double <laughs> as Ply's father. Well, no, no, yeah. Ply's is his son. <laughs> yeah, it could be Ply's dad. Yeah. You yeah, never know. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, like, obviously, your shit is actually dope. So, like, it's immediately you saw that it was going to work. Immediately. Uh, I felt like, you know, it was time for me to dive into it. So, I was doing everything that I could to really try to pop off and gain some traction. So, I was dropping freestyle videos, was going kind of crazy right. on Instagram. But I was also doing every kind of show I could community show, church show, even like these award ceremonies for rappers in the Bay. And so there's something called the Nine Quota Awards for the 925 Area Code in Pittsburgh that happened in 2018. I was the only Christian rapper a part of the show. 
And in the middle of my set, while I'm performing, the music cuts out, right? As it cuts out, instead of me panicking, being pissed at the sound man, I just freestyled a hook. Right. Devil want to run up on me. It's bad. Somebody recorded it. It went viral on Facebook. The whole theater went dumb to that joint. And that was the, my first song that really like got wow. me popping in California. That's dope. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> kind of crazy. Yeah, so that that like had my schedule going nuts. Like my my tour schedule was like an ancient scroll. You had to like. So you were like, doing like concerts. You were doing like church stuff. Like all of the above. Like so, I was throwing my own shows, but primarily I was getting booked at conferences, at churches, and youth groups, and all of that. But it would be lit. And I'll post the footage, and it's like, you couldn't really tell it's a church. It looked like it's a lit concert. You know what I'm saying? So I got to ask you, because I uh, I was just listening to a podcast about uh, about religion a little bit. But they were talking about Joel Olstein and what's the guy with the evil eyes who got the private jet? Oh. Uh, the white dude. No, not Creflo. It's uh, the white dude. You know what I'm talking about. I know who you're talking about, though. Yeah, yeah. The fucking like real, like. He was like, Tyler Perry made it so cheap for me, I had to buy it. I had to buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, he he's, the mo- he's the richest pastor in the world right now, just so people know. He's worth like $100 million. He's, 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 he's more rich than Joel Osteen. Like, he's paid. Because he's like internationally influential. Correct. Right? Anyway, yeah. so, you know, my main gripe with religion in general uh, is the... I feel like it is easily manipulated to control poor people. Mm. And I feel like, you know, the whole entire, like, idea of being a pastor or being, like, a preacher or being somebody who's, like, a man of God is, like, to be selfless. That Mm. should be the idea. You know what I mean? And, you know, I feel like at times we'll see, like, these preachers who will fully take advantage of the gig of having a non uh non taxable entity that they're a part of. Ooh, five oh one three C. Yes. And uh you know they use it for their benefit and you know it is what it is. Um but you know me and my boy James were just talking and he was like it's crazy because he grew up in the church and he was like he's he's a stand up comedian. He's like being a preacher is kinda like being a stand up comedian. <laughs> he's like because you gotta you gotta kinda like spit your shit. You gotta captivate them. And then you gotta it hopefully you get your own church. Mm. And then otherwise people are doing like there's preachers who are preaching in like a room like this with chairs. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, eventually they they get their own church. He's like, the thing is, is like, I just feel like it's crazy if like a preacher comes to preach in like a two thousand dollar suit and then goes and jumps in like a S five hundred to like and, and their church is falling apart. It ain't even that. It's like, mm-hmm. yo, like, isn't that kind of like not what God would want? Or am I crazy? Like, Joel Osteen is so rich. And my and, and this podcast I was listening to was like, Joel Osteen's such a great motivational speaker that if he just stepped away from being a quote-unquote preacher and was a motivational speaker who happened to be Christian, people would look at him in like a lot more of like a positive way because he's like mm-hmm. very talented. He's a talented speaker. A lot of these guys very are very uplifting. talented. Yeah, very, very uplifting, encouraged. talented guys. But at the same time, like, it's the same guy who like initially tried to prevent people from sheltering at his church until he got called out for it, and then he was like, oh, no, no, no. Mm, but mm. that that's probably my biggest gripe with, like, commercial Christianity is, like, a lot of the quote-unquote, like, faces of it to me are, like, <coughs> based on my knowledge of Christianity, not mm. very Christ-like. Mm, mm. Yeah, I've definitely, I've definitely seen what you're talking about. Of course, it's like a well-known thing that some pastors may have been exposed for those kind of things. Or I've, I've been at churches to where the doorknobs are missing, but you have a Bentley. The paint is falling off of the walls, but you got the fresh Gators on. Like a lot of stuff didn't add up for me. I mean, none but, of that makes sense. Yeah, but, f- but for me, early on, it's like I had to realize like it, it would be unhealthy for me to let Christians take me away from Christ. You know what I'm saying? Like regardless of what they are doing. God didn't do this to me. People are flawed, right. you know what I'm saying? But 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 God is not. And so that's that keeps me like focused like even though they wilding out, sleeping with whoever, you know what I'm saying? Still the money from whatever. I know God is still good. Would you ever uh actually like be a preacher? Like obviously you did youth youth pastoring, but would you ever like, you know, try to like be like, "Yo, I'm a fucking like leave music and do yeah. that?" 
Like maybe when you're 50. Ooh, I, I mean, you know, I won't close the door to it because I'm a preacher now for real. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, you preach through music. Yeah, and I'm but a, you're still an artist. You're not a preacher, so you. Can, yeah, 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 So you're yeah, a dope I artist mean, who happens to, you know, like that. There's a line there. That, yeah, it's like I know how to how to, I guess, convince people of the message. Like at the concerts too, it's like y'all ready to boost it up for the Lord. I mean, I don't use that voice, but you know, what I'm saying I hype them up. In an excited anybody ever way fight at your concerts? You said what? Anybody ever fight at your shows? Somebody, somebody like, what are we ran. Doing here, guys? Somebody ran up on me on on stage. Who? Christian rapper? In Long Beach? No, <laughs> no not a Christian rapper. Uh, he tried to press me in the middle of my concert. What? Where was your security? No, but you, but you know what? Security came like ten seconds after. They probably thought I was a part of the act because I'd be having a lot of. Do try to press you in Long Beach? Yeah, because like somebody was in the crowd, like let the little kids get on stage. And I was kind of like dismissive a little bit, like maybe later on, later on. And then he was like, but it's about the young people. And he got on stage and really tried to like, like, you know, in L.A., they'd be like, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. But security pulled up on him. They pulled him in the parking lot. And he low-key started to like, like exorcist type energy. He was like manifesting. I'm like, yo, what is going on Wait, here? the dude who tried to press you started like he like fell out and was like, ah, oh, I'm saved. No, kind of like he had a demon in him. <laughs> that was a little crazy. That was, so that, that that was the only like situation that came close to like a confrontation physically. Yeah. But yeah, bro was on one. It could have been the ecstasy. I don't know. Have you ever seen someone get exorcist exorcisted? What is that? How do I say that? <laughs> hey, ex- exercise. I think they call that exercise. You know. Besides a month ago. What? A month ago, I seen it in Simi Valley. Shout out to Simi Valley, man. Hey, see me. 805. Real, real calm. I might get a spot out there. You see me, Valley. Good place. I went to Revelations Church uh, with, with Pastor Lovey. And, y'all, I'm, I'm telling you, people drive from all over the country to go to this man's church. Yeah. Um, he's ministering to this young lady, and she's, like, kind of, like, crying, like, Pastor, I need help. I need help. And he's being encouraging to her. Then all of a sudden, he stops talking to her and talks to something that's inside her. He was like, come out of her right now. And she went from, ah, to. I would have got the fuck up out of there. Yeah. <laughs> like, her eyes was like. I'd have been out. And then, you're like, come out of her right now. And then she, like, melted to the ground. I'm like, oh, Lord. It was wild. You stayed? I'd have been like, all right, y'all. And that was the first one of the night. It was like four of them. Four X. Ex- it was like four of them. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm good. On a Thursday night. I'm I'm good, man. Yeah, shout out to Prophet Lovey. That's crazy. Uh, do you got a? Obviously, your album's out. Uh, how, how, are you like? On, I know you got a show coming up in uh, Orange County, but are, are you doing like a, a national tour? What's going on with you right now? Yeah, we plan on the. Well, we just came off of a tour. Okay. Uh, the first leg of the Cross Lake tour, we was in Canada, uh, Seattle, Portland, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Houston, Atlanta, Detroit, Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying? But we're gonna extend that joint. And really, uh, the next stop for us is this Saturday. We have our own festival every year in the Bay. It's called Glow Fest. And so this year, it's going to be massive. Is Glow really going to be there? You know what? We've been... I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Glow Rilla. Big Glow got to come to Glow Fest. I ain't going to lie. I was hot. I was hot when she came out because I'm like, dang, like she got that Glow branding on lock. Like, oh, yeah. She got it. At first, our first. Our yeah, festival... Glow. Cubans and Cubans. Our festival was called uh, Glowchella at first. Oh, that's dope. And then you probably got hit with that cease and desist. Glowchella, Coachella did hit us up. Yeah, of course they did. Yeah. They hit us up. Yeah. They don't play. Any type of cella, don't play. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The word cella, they were oh, like, we own, we own the word cella. Yeah. So you can't use this. And I changed it to Glowfest, and they still like came after us. But now, Wait, now who, we work. Who came after you for Glowfest? So it's, it's, a, it's a whole story, man. We changed the name of the Instagram from Glowchella to Glowfest, but we had some flyers there another from the Glowfest? previous year uh, in different parts of the country, Yeah, but not like ours. You feel me? Uh, they shut down our page because we still had flyers up from last year that said Glowchella on it. You know what I'm saying? We tried to make a new page, and that one was shut down, too. Damn. <laughs> they were serious. They were serious, but now we working with Coachella. Shout out to Golden Voice. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Golden Voice. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Because I mean, obviously that they they I think they own the Observatory, right? Yeah. 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 yeah they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go, man. So. Do they do Coachella too? Yes. Damn, yeah. them motherfuckers at Glowfest are rich. 
All right. Golden and, voice. Uh, a golden voice. And gold flat. Yeah, whatever. You know what I mean. And glow. Yeah. And glow. Glow, glow fest guys are rich, that. too. That prophetic. Prophetic. That. Put it in the air. Yeah. Yeah. What Who else is it? dope that's a Christian rapper that I should check out? Ooh. You got to check out somebody named Holvey. Holvey just did a song with Sierra. He's tough. He's more overt, but the vibes are there. Is that the guy who subdissed someone on your song? Nah, nice. nah, not him, not him. He oh. he's too holy for that. Uh, too and holy. Caleb, Caleb Gordon, Caleb Gordon, super fire. Yeah. Um, probably the, the next to really go mainstream with it. Um, who who am I? John Keith. John Keith. John Keith going crazy. He a real rapper, rapper. Hmm. Uh, we working on a project together called the West Indies. You guys are doing a pro- like a joint album. Like a joint, yeah, Dope. joint EP, little five songs. West Indies capitalize on the on the movement. Um, I mean, of course, Lecrae, Andy Minio. And hey, then, Andy's dope. Andy hard. Coming See, Andy to hot. me is like a perfect example of a guy who's like, you know, his content is his content, but like, he just makes dope music. Yeah, he and then you're rapper. listening to it, and you're like, oh, this guy's. I know where he stands on the religious side. Yeah, he's talking about God. You know what I'm saying? And so he he's one of our goats. Cray and Andy, those, those are our goats for sure. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a whole movement. There's too many for me to. Kanye's name. not a Christian rapper goat. Mm-hmm. No, I gotta ask. You know, he, he he wasn't he didn't he win best Christian album of the year at the Grammys? He topped all the charts. He won best Christian album. Hey, Jesus walks. Oh, it's a great record. That joint is Mount Rushmore of Christian songs. I mean, look, and he had hella people singing. About Jesus that would not have otherwise sang about Jesus. Yeah, but I think I think we can't we can't put him up there because like it was short lived. Yeah, I mean, look, Kanye's a flawed man, <laughs> but he's you know he's also got the biggest Christian rap song of all time. It's the biggest, but is it the best? In yeah, well, my yeah, opinion, yeah, yeah, well, yes. Well, uh, I'll send you, I'll I love send you Jesus some Walks. That's my shit. <laughs> oh yeah, the song. Yeah, the song. Oh, I love. I the don't song. know what. Could... I don't know about Je- no, 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 no. Now, uh, Jesus is King album. He yeah, it was great beats. Shout out to my guy Books of Beast. Murdered the production on there. But just miss- worst Kanye album in my opinion. Just respectfully. All right, gotta stop the interview to tell you about our folks at Blue Chew. That's right. You've been hearing us talk about Blue Chew. Give you a little extra pep in your step in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you. Blue Chew is just amazing. Um, a lot of people want to know if it works. Well, this is what we're going to do, man. We're going to give you a free month of Blue Chew supply. All you got to do is go to bluechew.com and use the promo code bootleg right now. Now, what is Blue Chew? It's a unique online service. It delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis and Levitra. But at a fraction of the cost and in a chewable form, it's super simple. You sign up at BlueChew.com with that promo code bootleg. You can solve with one of their licensed medical providers online. You get approved, and then you get your prescription within days. No awkward visits to the doctor. No going to the doctor and talking to some old white dude about why your dick isn't working. Let's be honest. It's a little embarrassing. You're sitting in the... uh, in the fucking waiting room, you're looking through a three-year-old Sports Illustrated magazine waiting to get called in to go tell someone how your cock is not cocking. All right? Don't trip. Blue Chew's got you, all right? Use that promo code right now, bluechew.com, promo code bootleg, and try a month supply for free, all right? Also want to give a shout-out to the good folks at my bookie. That's right. Listen, man, my bookie's going crazy. Obviously, baseball season is booming right now. So, uh, you know, I just got good at betting on baseball, too. Trust me when I say there's really money to be made. But the dope thing about mybookie.ag, you sign up right now, use the promo code bootleg. When you sign up, you're going to get that first deposit bonus, free money to gamble with in their online casino. And the casino is lit. What are you into? Blackjack. They got the live blackjack. You could watch the dealer. You could tip the dealer like you're in wherever you think you're at, Vegas, whatever. They also got the roulette. They got the craps. They got all the slots. If you're into the slot games, if you're into whatever you're into, bro, they got it. MyBookie.ag. Sign up right now. Use that promo code bootleg. When you get that new account, they're going to give you that first deposit bonus. Yes. So go do that. Let's get back to the interview. Respectfully. Do you listen to non-Christian rap music in your spare time, or do you not want you try to shake that energy? <laughs> Uh, I make sure I don't I don't dive in too deep to, into the rabbit hole. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm definitely tapped in. Because that should probably like artists. rub off on you a little, like some of the energy. I mean, but it would be foolish for me to not to not be tapped. Like in. who are you listening to? That's like not like who are you bumping? Like who are you like what are you a fan Ooh, of right who now? Who am I bumping? That's not. Oh, can I say this on air? 
I like listening to a lot of underground artists. What's you that mean to you? Because I know what underground is from my day. It was literally underground. Like, what, underground now is like, yo, I like Logic. Like, Logic is definitely not like, underground. And shout out to Logic. Uh, people think Corday is underground, right? Corday is like an undergroundish artist. Nah. But he's still yeah. underground. No, but he's like, if he was in, if it was 99, he'd be underground. Common was underground. Common has no, Common don't have one plaque. That's a crazy thing to say out loud. Common has much more than one plaque. You got to relax with that. <laughs> you know. Uh, Common was an underground rapper. I literally just told him to his face. I said, thank you for changing my life. You're at, I, was, I never met a lo- lo- his back, uh, backpack a lo- underground like rap. Anyway, uh, the new definition of underground isn't underground. Still, Playboy Cardi's underground to an extent. Ooh. Is he a commercial artist? Is he commercially successful? Of course not. Have you ever turned on the fucking radio and heard a Playboy Cardi song in the last five years? No, you haven't. Because he's not. He's, a, he's an underground cult artist. Is radio constitute mainstream now? No, but has he ever had a, num- a top five solo Billboard record? A top ten solo Billboard record? Of course not. He has it? Rod Wa- no, Rod Wave. Rod Wave is not underground. Yeah, but he's making commercially palatable music. I don't know. Okay, so who are you listening to? I think it's crazy, though, how he's not underground, but he's selling out arenas. Or, or he is underground, selling out arenas. Rod Wave and them. Like, it's crazy how you don't have to be, like, mainstream, but you could, like, go But Rod Wave's had number one like records that. at Urban Radio, so I wouldn't consider him underground. Mm-hmm. But, but for me, who, underground for me is, like, Zoe Osama. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Zoe. Uh, Yellow Hill. Yeah. Hey, Yellow Hill's put out some. Our boy TK, who did his Christian rap song that he has with Lecrae, it was recorded and produced right here by our team here. For real? Yes. Yeah, me and Yellow Hill have been talking. We gonna link up. Yeah. Y'all was Yellow Hill. Now, he he be crip. Let me he not be, say he be, he be cripping. He be aggressive cripping. He really just like LA. Don't come to LA. He LA, LA. LA is not safe. LA is not safe. It's Yellow Hill. <laughs> I'm like, do I be going that hard for the Bay? Like, am I that Bay how he is L.A.? Because that, that brother. Yo, like, he's the most L.A. person alive. Alive, brother. And he'll let you know. Don't come to L.A. At all. At all. It ain't safe for the tourists. Shout out to Jesus. Anyway, shout out to, Le- uh, shout out to him and Lecrae. They got a dope song out. They that do. Our they boy do. TK produced. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, no, Yellow Hills Underground, yeah. Yeah, for Soli. Uh, and HBK Gang Underground. My favorite rapper to this day is I Am Sue. Shout out to... Bay Area Pioneer. Shout out to Sue. We got a record, too. Oh, my God. He put me on a, a gospel record. Uh, he's singing on that joint, you know, talking about what God has done for him. Shout out to Sue, man. I was probably more, more edgy on that than he was. Yeah, shout out to my God. He going to, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to go crazy, though. You should do a, like, uh, I already know you already did a Not Like Us freestyle, but you should do, like, a Not Like Us, but you're rapping like you're God to the devil. Oh, are you dirty devil? Or do the Euphoria version? That's right, you little bitch ass Satan. You know what I'm saying? Rapping to Euphoria is more difficult than not like us. Or do do meet the Grams, but about the devil, and you're like rapping from the perspective of God. And you would be dirty hard. devil, understand? You got kicked out of heaven. I see. When I was it, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. With the, with a the nasal flow. Yeah. Throw a little Playboy Cardi slide in there. Oh my God. Playboy. There, there was a point to where his music was just like vibey. Really? Yeah. yeah. Now, when he was rocking with ASAP and uh, you know the uh, the cozy tapes era and and die lit and, and things, just the, the red tape. The, the, what is it called? The red album. Know, shit. Yeah, so, so. The red album. Whatever it is, that shit was. You know, seeing seeing what he did at Rolling Loud really inspired us to really go harder in our movement. What did he do? Um, he well, brought out I, some guy who looked like he was on heroin. The white guy who's always with him, the guy looks like he's got a serious heroin problem. And then they were just like, ah! yeah, it was, it was, ah! yeah, it, it was all of that. And so I'm like, if they could do seemingly satanic stuff on a high level. I know it was seemingly satanic, but are we for sure it was satanic? Because to me, they a, were just screaming and looking, looking like they were malnourished. If I'm not mistaken, I think he had like some logos that pointed to Satanism. Up to, upside down cross? Yeah, 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 100. It's like, what's the, if you're not... A Satan is. What's the point of having that? You know what I'm saying. So in my is eyes, is there a is is to, in his defense? Is there a world in which an upside down cross means anything else? I just don't know. I'm not. Um, I'm not hip to the imagery. 
you know, it's a possibility that it may be, but from my understanding, it's it could be seen as blasphemy. Mm. It could be seen as um, f your god. I think you know. I mean, I think for the purpose of what they do, they just like to put shit on shirts that they think looks cool. And it could be for shock value. It could be for for shock value. For sure. sure. But you shocking the wrong people, boy. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Uh, Are you are you you're just straight Christian? Like, is that because there's so many different types of factions? You know, it's like there's like Baptist. There's like yeah, like what what gang am I a part of? Which gang are you in? Which clique do I associate with? Yeah. Um, it's I'm not a part of any of. So they like to call it non-denominational. Oh, those, you're non-denominational. Those, yeah, those okay. cliques are denominations. Yeah, there's so, like Seven Day Adventists, and you know. I don't I don't subscribe to any of them. Not to say that I won't, but like I never even understood why we had to separate ourselves like that. It's like you believe right. in Jesus, you're a Christian, bro. Like, what is I don't know the difference between any of them. Like, what's a Lutheran? Compared to a Baptist, compared to a Seventh Day Adventist, compared. Now I do know once you start getting into you know Jehovah's Witnesses, they got some interesting takes, and they're very aggressive on the door knocks. Oh yeah, one hundred. Them Jehovah's Witnesses don't play. Them and the Mormons. You know they. You got believe... Mormon fans because that is a wild religion. No, I do. Catholic Mormons and uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, they believe that only one hundred, one hundred forty-four thousand people get into heaven, and so they're trying the Mormons? to Mormons. And Jehovah Witnesses, oh, they okay. I think the Mormons too. The Mormons believe some much more crazier shit. For the record, yeah, I think I think they believe in like some aliens. And like, stuff. I got tons of Mormon homies. I grew up, I went to high school in Mesa, Arizona, with tons of Mormons. Shout out to them, sweet people. Mitt Romney, you know, shout out to him. Whatever the fuck he's doing <laughs> with his life. You perform in Salt Lake City yet? No, I have not. See, not that's yet. where you got to. Oh, go. that, that's Mormon. Mormon. You got to pull up, and yeah. when you get on the mic, you got to say, "Choose the right," and they'll be like, "Yeah." Like on some Republican stuff? No, choose the right is, is CTR. All the Mormons have the CTR rings. Uh, so they call it the right? Like Choose that's like, the right. I don't know what it means. I just know it's something Mormons be saying. Choose hey, the right, CTR. If I say that. It's not some Republican They're going to press me. No, no, they're not. They're going to be like, fuck yeah. Damn, what you know about the right, homie? You know what's crazy though? When I was a kid, like all the Mormons, like, you know, because the Mormons are like super, super nice people. They're really sweet people. Obviously, they're mostly conservative. Yeah, yeah. Um... But all the Mormon kids in school were the ones who were, like, doing the real drugs. Like, Do people what? got caught with heroin or pills. It was the Mormon kids. Because I feel like they was, like, rebelling against their crib. Because, you know, at home, they're not allowed to drink caffeine. They oh, can't yeah, watch, yeah, They can't watch the fucking Simpsons. It's real strict. It's real strict. And that's, that's the danger with, with religion. It's like, if you heavily restrict the kids at home, they're likely to just do any and everything when they get a little taste of freedom. Is it safe to say Scientology is the wildest religion ever? Well, I think wild, wild may not be the right word. There's some wild stuff out there. But Scientology... Out of all the big ones. Out of all the big ones, it's, it's, it's the most concerning for sure. Yeah, it's pretty... It's pretty uh, for sure. It's pretty... So, you know, it's, it's interesting because obviously, you know, whatever you feel about religion is what it is. But when you see the people... like. I've watched all the documentaries about yeah, me too. Like me going too. clear and all that. And yo, the fact that they're able to get people to buy into this shit. Yeah, yeah. Like Hubbard was like, first of all, not very successful, but has more published science fiction works than any author ever. This dude's entire shtick was he was a science fiction author and then he created a religion. It's wild. And people believe it. And they be on some no, like they be gang banging. That they be on shit. some power trip stuff too. And they're like, they got the mafia, dog. They be like taking fools out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, for real. And I think if you join your high level Scientology, like you can't, you can't get out. You can't real. get out. They won't let you out, bro. I was seeing this one documentary. It was like a testimony about you know what they had to endure. This lady was like, and they they made me clean the sanctuary with my tongue. Damn. Like sis had to mop the floor with her tongue. Like what are we talking about? Listen, with any religion, there's the dark side of it, for sure. For sure, for sure. So, you know. I'm sure it's not, it's not all terrible like that, but science fiction novels? No, no, the Scientology is just wild. And, and like, honestly, the Mormons are right behind them. They're like, hey, don't, hey, what about us? We're crazy as fuck, too. <laughs> Shout out to the Mormons, though. Uh, anyway, listen, God man, bless. you got a new album out right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
everybody go support it. You're doing your thing. Uh, people can go buy tickets if you're in the LA area, Orange County area for August 31st. Not sold out yet at the Observatory. Not sold out yet. We're going to pack that joint out, though. Um, sure. And uh, anything else you want to talk about before you get out of here? Hey, man, it's grateful to be here, big bro. Like, for real. Sorry you if good. I offended you or got you in trouble. Bro, or, you good. Like, yeah. I, I, I enjoy this. I enjoy this. <laughs> yes. I don't, I, you know, I, you're like, why'd you sit down with that atheist bastard in LA? You know, the, the, uh, the over religious may say some. But the folks who know what's up gonna be like, yo, you sat with Blue Lake Kev, brother. You went in. I do want to interview like one of these mega preachers. They Which win. one? Probably Joel Olstein. Because like, I feel like he's a reasonable guy. Yeah. I don't think he's like a psycho. Nah, Blue Lake I think, Lake he's, a, I think he's an entrepreneur, which is a problem. Oh, which is a. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Joel Osteen. Man. No, no, but I, 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 when you watch him, you're like, oh, this guy's a talented, motivational speaker. Yeah. I understand why people like him. Yeah. He's a likable guy. I don't, think so. he's a, I don't think he's a bad guy. But it depends on what you think is a bad guy. Dang, dang. But I want to interview one of them, like T.D. Jakes or one of you them. You know who you should interview? Mike Todd. I don't know who that is. Mike Todd. Sounds like a senator from Kentucky. Nah, listen, Michael Todd. He's a young pastor, but he's viral all the time. Mike he's, Todd. He's urban. I he's, want to interview that dude who who they ran up on him in church and they tried to rob him, and then it came out that he was like ripping off his uh, in New York. He in jail. He's in jail. That's who I want to interview. <laughs> that brother. Was hey, he deserved Brooklyn. to get robbed for sure. He was robbing his people. I think he was stunned. He had like all the rings on. Oh my him. god! See, that's the kind of shit that makes me want to throw up. Mm. So I'm like, mm. man, you got your people coming to your church struggling. You're asking them for money, but you out here dressed like Pimp Magic Don Juan, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? And like, I think he was like putting shame on people for not giving him money or something like that. Like, do you? That do you, was sad. Do you do the tide? I tithe for sure. Yeah. Mm. Roll yeah. tide. <laughs> Roll tide. It be it be tough sometimes, but I'm blessed for sure. What are, what are you supposed to tide? What's the percentage of the tide? Tide is a ten percent, ten percent of what you get in. Do you know like which church you're tithing? Is it different? Tithing? No, no, I give it to to the church that I go to. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Mm. And it's like even if you don't look at the Bible, like this is a practical way to support what supports you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's right. Any charity stuff you're doing? Uh, ch- charity. Not yet. We're trying to set something up though. We're gonna do something called Christ Like Christmas this year. Just giving away pieces of our brand. We have a clothing line called Christ Like Collection. So is this, a, is this your stuff here? Oh yeah, it's one of them. Oh, that's fire. You know when you wear that hat, you give me country vibes. Hey. Okay, brown vibes. Hey man, Pittsburgh is not it's not a, a big city. It's low key kind of country, even though Is it in the bay? Bro, we got cows. Oh, I didn't even know that existed. We in the got bay. crops. Yeah, bro. I just know there's sideshows and there's Oh yeah, that, that's Oakland and Richmond. Sideshows, hoes and broken side windows. And broken windows. We was going to do our festival in Oakland at the Fox Theater. Would have been a bad play. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You have all them Christians going out there getting fucking robbed. Getting robbed. All of them. No, not like face-to-face robbed, but like come back outside after a great night watching Miles Minnick and all of our windows are busted and uh, my work laptop's missing. And that happened That happened in downtown LA. And now I got to go to the mission and try to find it because some Mexican dude's selling it on the corner. It's a... Uh... Yeah, shout out to the Bippers, man. The Bippers be bipping, man. Hey, and in L.A., it's starting to come over here. Yeah, the culture is coming over. Keep the over. bipping out there, bro. We don't need it here. We yeah, I came out here for a here. change. For sure, man. Well, listen, no, I appreciate My car did get breaking into four times in Long Beach where I live. And four so times. Well, Long you should Beach, move. I mean, you better. should probably stop leaving shit in your car. Please do better. Yeah. Nothing be in there. Well, l- leave your windows I'm open. trained. No, you're right. Windows you're right. down, trunk open. That's how you got to do it. Oh, and for the Tesla, the, the front got to be open. The front got to be open. Miles Minnick, appreciate you, brother. Oh, you already know, man. Let's there it is. It. Fire.